just me, or is it getting crazier out there? <laughs> Send in the clowns. In the States, at least, comic book films have become so big that they are now their own genre. You know, when I was younger, that wasn't a genre. We had comedy and drama and horror, and but now comic books is actually its own genre. But, and while there's been some incredible work done in that space, they always felt cut from the same cloth in that they were very big and event and CGI spectacles to some extent, and we just kept thinking, or I was thinking at the time, what would it be like to really strip strip it all down and do and do a really intimate character study, a deep dive kind of handmade movie uh, where you explore one of these characters um, in an intense way. The thing I like about this film is there's not just one thing that um, changes Arthur. And really, as I, as I read the script, um, my opinions about the character were always changing. I was never certain of what his motivations were. Um, I think that was part of the appeal for me uh, as an actor was to, 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 to explore all the different possibilities. It's a tough time in Gotham. I think people feel very disconnected and they distrust each other. And I think Arthur is somewhat a product of that. Can you please stop bothering my kid? Sorry. When you make a movie about one person, every other element becomes a character, if that makes sense. So the music is suddenly a character, and the locations are suddenly a character, and the setting, uh, the, the time period, all those things have a much bigger impact, I've noticed, when it's a movie about one person. And uh, so we always saw when we were writing Gotham as a broken down city, a city on the brink um, where um, Arthur could inhabit and feel that world crumbling around him. <laughs> I think the, the one thing that I, that I knew that I believed to be real was um, he experienced childhood trauma. And I think that that, more than anything, kind of shapes his perception of the world. I realized that he was in, in a, had the traits of post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and that's somebody that's in a, in a highly reactive state in which they perceive and look for a threat everywhere. Um, so for me, that was really the, the foundation of the character was this experience that, that he had when he was younger and how much it, it shaped the world. And finally, in a world where everyone thinks they could do my job, check out this guy. When I was a little boy and told people I was gonna be a comedian, everyone laughed at me. Well, no one's laughing now. You can say that again, pal. I mean, Joaquin and I spent six months talking about the movie before we shot the first frame of the movie. So all we did was collaborate and talk about um, ways to do scenes, approaches to the character, tone, talk about telling him how the movie's gonna look. Um, so yeah, no, this was pretty much for me the most intense collaboration I've had working in movies. One, because Joaquin makes everything intense, but also because the movie's essentially about one person. There are other actors in the movie, but Joaquin's in every frame, essentially. And I've never made a movie about one person before. I've made movies about groups and friends and da-da-da. But to really go deep dive with one actor was um, transformative for me. When you work with a, with a filmmaker and, and you're the, the lead character, um, there's always a, a collaboration. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we did work, work closely uh, with each other. I mean, uh, the thing that was, was impressive was, you know, the, the dedication that Todd had. Um, so I think I could probably be really annoying because, you know, I would go home after work and sometimes I'd review dailies and I'd go through the script. And so I would just have, like, still have questions. And so I would call him for two hours. We would talk, like, almost every night. And he was always game and always interested and, and available. Um, we were always trying to come up with, with new ideas and something that might surprise us. Pretty much why I make movies is is to see a great actor take something and elevate it in a way 
that we couldn't even write in, on the page. You know, it's like um, uh, th that's the exciting part about making films. And and when we sat down to write Joker, I wrote it with uh, my friend Scott Silver. All we were talking about was Joaquin Phoenix. I had never worked with Joaquin before. I didn't know Joaquin. I just knew he's one of the great actors of his generations by the films I've seen um, and the performances he's given. So yeah, it was it was exciting to me to see, no matter how um, detailed and how well we wrote a script, for him to come in and make it his own. That is literally what people mean, I think, when they say the magic of movies. That's the magic part, you know? Oftentimes, if a filmmaker tries to talk to me and, and say, like, I think I'm going to start with a close-up, I go, I, I, I don't care. Do whatever you're doing. Because um, I guess I just don't want to be aware of those things and, 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 and play to the camera. I think it's important as an actor to just do what feels truthful to you and the camera um, adjusts. I think you have to find things organically um, as an actor it has to it has to feel right to you in in the moment in, in this there were you know Todd and 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 Larry Shear the cinematographer would really allow the whole set to be available to me the in the entire room wherever we were shooting in so if I if it felt like we might want to move over into another area for part of the scene we were we were had the freedom to, to do that and I, I do like working that way I think you would be a bad director personally if you hire and finally get Joaquin Phoenix in your movie and you say, okay, you sit right there and say the line like this, and on that line, get up and go and get a cup of water and then come back. It's not the way you work with somebody like Joaquin, and uh, it's much more interesting to bring him into the set, show him the room, and then sort of rehearse and watch where he goes, and then we build the camera blocking and all those things around that. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Towards the end, dancing on the stairs, um, we see it in 24 frames a second, which is what film normally is, and his movements, his dance movements, seem choppy and uncoordinated. And then Todd then shot it in slow motion. Um, and he appears graceful. And I thought it was like a, a great way of kind of showing uh, the subjective reality and the objective reality. <laughs> Certainly the, the, the makeup and the suit that Joker has um, had, a, a, you know, quite an effect on me and the character. I mean, to be honest, when we went to shoot Joker, which I think it was the sixth week of shooting, it was the first time that I'd played that character, um, I didn't really know what what how what I was gonna do. We we talked about a lot of different possibilities, but I I just I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. And when I put on the suit and the makeup, it was the first time that I had all of it together. Um, I think it does just change you in some ways. And the character seemed to emerge for me then at that moment. For me, villains have always been more interesting, and in, to some extent, and and Joker is pretty much the biggest villain in comic book world, a DC, I should say. Um, and the most interesting part was he, he, you know, Joker famously doesn't have an origin. And in the comics, they've always sort of avoided it. There's one where he says, I prefer my past to be multiple choice. So I thought, well, why not? I mean, I didn't realize at the time it would be as sacrilegious as it seems to be. <laughs> but we just thought it would be um, a fun one to explore. One small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? I think part of what, what I love about filmmaking is the collaboration, um, not just with the, the filmmaker and the writer, which is obvious, but the, the profound effect that anybody that I come in contact with while I'm working can influence and shape the character. Um, and that's always really exciting to me. I don't think people, audience members, are aware of that or it's talked about um, a lot, but there were several scenes, um, for instance, a scene where I'm dyeing my, my hair green and it was meant to have already been green and, uh, and it wasn't showing up when the, when the wig was wet, the green wasn't showing up. And so it kind of, we didn't know what to do. And Kay and Nikki, who worked on hair and makeup, um, suggested that we actually just get a little tube with some green dye and be putting it in. And we started doing that and shooting that scene and it completely changed the way that I was approaching the scene.
um, or Joel from Props um, in a scene gave me um, a kind of a run out of things to do at the end of the scene or tried different versions. And he came and he handed me the gun. He goes, you know, you have, have this, you want to use that? And so then I started working with that and that completely changed the end of that scene. Um, so I think I love that collaboration that there's all these different brilliant artists that come together um, who are all focused and committed to, to helping me find the character.